On today's episode, I'm going to test Creawesome. It's kind of a plug-in for Cura, specifically for Creality machines. And I'm going to test it on the Creality Under 3 and the Creality Under 5. And I'll show you how well it works on today's Filament Friday. This week's Filament Friday is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. The reason I say it's kind of a plug-in is because it's not typical plug-in like you have in Cura where you just select it, install it, and then reboot. This one you have to download, it's a zip file, and then you have to modify a folder that's in the installation of Cura. And so really what you're doing is modifying Cura, not necessarily a plug-in. But what it does do is change some features of Cura that are great or awesome for a Creality user. Now, it also includes slicing profiles, which a lot of people have said print really, really good at small, but haven't got as good a results at large prints. So that's what I wanted to test. Plus, it's got some features that I think you might like. So the first thing you have to do is download it from their site. And like I said, it's a .zip file. You unzip it. And then there's a resources folder that you have to replace with their resources folder. And make sure you get the right one because... I did the wrong one. There's actually two. There's a resources within the resources folder on my Mac and I screwed the whole thing up. But I figured it out with help from one of my Patreon supporters and we got it working. But once you've got that in place, what it does is you reboot in Cura and it adds some really interesting features. Once you've got it installed, now you can go to machine settings and there's a whole set of Cree Awesome profiles or machine profiles. And one of them is the Ender 3. And when you select that, it not only shows the build plate, it shows a picture of the whole printer. Which is kind of nice because if you're switching to a different printer, it reminds you that you have the profile of the Ender 3. Now there isn't one for Ender 5 yet, but I think there is one for the CR-10S Pro. So it's a nice feature. I don't think it adds anything to the quality of the prints or nothing, but it does make Cura look more like a Creality slicer. Now once you've got that loaded, it also installs or start the Cree Awesome Slicer settings. And there's really only a couple differences that I saw between the Cree Awesome settings and my settings. So let me show you what those are. So the first one I noticed right away is the extrusion width. They're using a 0.5 extrusion width where I'm using a 0.4, which is typical of Cura. And that actually may help you on some prints, and I think that's why it actually prints better small. The theory is you should extrude at a width equal to 1.2 times the diameter of your nozzle. So at a 0.4 nozzle, you really should be extruding at about a 0.48. That's kind of the typical starting point. But I found the 0.4 worked really well for me, so I never changed it. With theirs going to a 0.5, they're really at a 1.25 times the nozzle width but it did seem to help. Another area where they had a difference was in retraction. Now retraction I found on the Ender machines is limited by the extruder speed. The firmware on a stock machine of both these limits the extruder to 25 millimeters per second. So you have to increase the distance that you're gonna retract and that's what I didn't see in Cree Awesome. They had it set to five millimeters retraction at 45 millimeters per second. Well it's going to limit you to 25 millimeters per second in the firmware. So you're really not getting everything you want. That's why mine is set to 6 millimeters at 25 millimeters per second. So give me a little more distance. And so I did find the retraction settings worked a little better on mine than the Cree Awesome, but that's an easy change. They've also got Z-Hop enabled, which I don't enable. That's an option you can do if you want. I found it can cause more problems than it actually helps, and it actually can cause more stringing as it pulls away and, and moves because that's z-hop is just it lifts the nozzle so it doesn't hit as it moves but then you end up with these little strings that sometimes are sticking out of your print so that's an option you can turn on and turn off other than that i really didn't see a major difference between the two but when i printed what i did find is that on smaller prints cree awesome actually printed slightly better than what more my profiles were getting so I printed on the other three with a bronze filament. It's an e-sun filament that I had lying around I needed to use up. And this is the Benchy. I printed my own Chep Pawn and I printed my own Chep Cube. And just the Chep Cube is beautiful. There is nothing wrong with this thing. I'll show a close-up of these. The Pawn is beautiful. 
The Benchy has the stringing like I was referring to, but really, really good print. I did the same thing on the Ender 5, only in this case I used my Filament Friday red filament and I got, again, really nice results. The pond was really good, the Chep Cube, awesome. And the Benchies, because you have a longer Bowden tube on this, the stringing was even worse. So I tried three different times. I actually got it up to eight millimeters of retraction and that seemed to get rid of most of the stringing. Overall though, I would say the smaller prints do indeed print better with Creosome than it does with my profiles. It's minor, but I'll give them the thumbs up on that. What I wanted to do then was print something bigger and I wanted to try some detail. And that's when I printed this. It's an Eiffel Tower print. I upsized this like I think 125%. And because it had 0.5, I didn't get the detail. First of all, the leg broke right off because there was no strength when I took it off the bed. The middle section here did not print very well at all. So I ended up with this thing just tearing apart. And the tower top just was hanging by a string. It just, it's a terrible terrible print and even the X's all the way up that are cross beams did not print well at all so I did the same thing on the under five and it wasn't just well there goes the top the top broke off and this one separated when I pulled it off the bed the foot stayed but it's just it's actually a terrible print so this is a very very fine detail but of course you could say well you probably shouldn't print with a 0.5 extrusion width on something so detailed but just to show you my profile to point four here's that same print I've got a lot of the cross bracing here it's solid the feet look really good the tower is solid the X's across the beam here look pretty good so it's more than just a 0.5 now if you want to go real detail of course you could go to a smaller nozzle and this is where Creosome has a really nice feature. They have this drop down menu where you can select the nozzle size that you want and it'll automatically adjust the settings for that nozzle. For my settings, I actually made a separate machine profile just for the 0.2. So if I want a 0.3 or a 0.5, I have to do a separate machine setting. So with their drop down, this is a very nice feature, especially if you're going to be printing with different size nozzles or you've got machines with different size nozzles that you want to print to. Overall, I can recommend Creosome. I'm really impressed with how well this is done, and it's so easy to install and use. Now, there's a few things that I would tweak or modify in their settings, but that's with any slicer settings. I know my settings that people have downloaded, people have told me that they've modified them to fit their machine or how they print. That's fine. It's just a starting point. And Creosome does a great job of giving you a great starting point using Cura with a Creality machine. So that's it for this week. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of these videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or just buy through the affiliate links in the description below. It all helps a lot. And if nothing else, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.